Welcome to CWC Art and Soul with Catherine. I am Catherine Whalen Coston, also known as Clarity Whisperer. I am the host and producer of the shows, a series of deep exploration into higher visions, better ways to live on planet Earth, new insights that may help us move beyond the old ways and into new, more harmonious systems that empower all, not just some. What if it isn't a choice between black or white? What if we can choose from a color palette far beyond what has been explored before? What if so many possibilities? If this kind of exploration intrigues you, please grab yourself a chair, put your feet up, as long as you aren't operating machinery, of course, and join us to mine for gems of wisdom. No medical advice is offered on any podcast on this channel. If you require medical assistance, please contact your healthcare practitioner. You can find previous podcasts on the website cwcartandsoul.com or on Apple Podcasts or on the YouTube channel. The guest list and future shows are also listed on the website. Now let's get exploring and have some fun. All right. Thank you for joining me for... Uh, CWC Art and Soul <laughs> is Catherine Whalen Coston, host and producer, and I'm super happy to be here today to be able to share some insights, some raw and real stuff that I think um, might may help give you a different perspective on certain aspects of life and certainly things that I've been through that have been very traumatic and um, life altering and mystical and miraculous. And so um, I am celebrating the color Very Peri, which is a periwinkle blue kind of a color. Um, Pantone called it Color of the Year Very Peri. That's what I'm celebrating today, and I will talk to you more about that as we progress. So thank you for joining me, and let's get into this chat. I am wanting to share some insights and some personal stuff even, Uh, get a little raw and real with you, because it's a significant period in my life right now. Um, Tomorrow is March 15th, 2022, and it marks the anniversary of a very significant moment in my life. Uh, Significant in so many ways, so many levels. And um, March 15, 2012, there was a vehicle accident and it was involved five young people and three of the people in the vehicle died instantly and two miraculously survived. And one of the people killed instantly was my son. And so... I I have had nothing but mystical and miraculous experiences ever since. And I have shared a lot of that in my uh, memoir that's just come out, my ebook, uh, Permission to Breathe. And it is, um, I'll put a link on the video for you. You can go to my website, cwcartandsoul.com and get the ebook as a PDF. I'm also working on getting it out as a paperback because I, I've been hearing that a lot of people still love to hold a book, which I do too. And so it uh, seems very natural to me. But so I've talked about this before and I've talked about Uh, my son's transition before on podcasts as well and I've talked about death and and that I believe there is no death and I wanted to share with you some of the most incredible synchronistic events that have happened in uh, the last 10 years Um, some 
there's been a lot, but, but I'm going to share a few with you just so you can have a, a sense of what might be possible. Part of it comes from being open to it. Part of it comes from, you know, I did a lot of healing work before the accident, before he left the planet. A lot of healing work on my relationships, on my own uh, life of many, many traumatic experiences and things I didn't, couldn't understand this planet. I just could not understand this planet. So much uh, pain and hurt that, you know, we're given. And so I'm going to share a bit of that. And I also am going to touch on a few other insights that have to do with the whole spiritual uh, understandings, things that have come to me uh, through these last few weeks as this 10 year anniversary is marking the calendar. So one of the first things that comes to mind is that I've been hearing lately is that people say, um, it really makes them doubt that there is a God because of all the traumatic things that are happening on the planet. It makes them doubt that there is a God. And I, I respect everyone's right to a belief and to, you know, whatever they, wherever they're at. And I, I respect the, and understand that we're not all on the same path. We're definitely not on the, um, we're not having the same experience. We, when we say we're all in this together, that's not true. We are each having our individual experience through the lens of our past and, and our um, personalities and our belief systems. So when people say that they're basing this on there is no God, and I find it a little bit funny too because I don't hear them say, oh, there's obviously a God because all the good things that are happening. No, humans like to take credit for the good things and blame God for the stuff they don't like. But this is the part that, you know, they say we didn't get a manual when we were, um, we wish we had gotten a manual. And I think we did. I think we knew very well what we were coming to. Uh, before we came here. I think that it's the reason there's so many spiritual teachers today that talk about souls lining up to get here, to come in, because this is, they knew, we knew this was going to be a big shift, shifting of the old patriarchy falling down and the new world, the fifth dimension coming into being. And so we wanted to be part of it. And the thing about planet Earth is it's a free will planet. It's, that's the design. So we also knew that we had free will. We had a lot of power. We have a lot of power, a lot more power than we knew. And we always have access to the divine because the divine is in us. And, you know, we've had teachers throughout history, uh, Jesus and the Christian religion who said, all these things I'm doing, you will do someday also. And so why are we so surprised that we have healers now and um, we've had healers throughout history who uh, allow spirit to come through them and, and be used as a vehicle to help heal all kinds of things. And so we, sh we surely shouldn't be surprised that this is happening. We've been told it's, you know, it's, it's not, um, it's not a new thing. It's truth. But the thing is, when we come to this planet, it's so amazing. New babies born and they have all this wisdom that they're coming in with, you know, past lives and things they've mastered before and very few new, new, new souls that have never been on planet Earth, but some. And so we have to remind them how to use the body, the physical body and you know gravity and stuff they learn that pretty quick you know but we we when we see gifts in and so i'm speaking really generally here but you know a lot of times a lot of people i've interviewed and talked to have said who were psychic who were really tapped into their um, sacred gifts, their psychic gifts, their ability to see the angels, to see the elementals, to see uh, spirit. We're told to shut up about it. 
or they were thought to be evil even if they could do things like that. So there were people who were beaten for having those gifts. So it's no wonder we have kept it quiet or we have denied them in ourselves because we didn't want to be shunned, we didn't want to be ridiculed, we didn't want to be burned at the stake. All of those things that have happened throughout history have are part of our cell memory, you know, as a collective. So when when I think about that and then when people say it's clear there isn't a god because bad things happen, actually that's a lot like saying it's clear there were no parents if a child does something wrong. And, you know, if your child ends up choosing to be a bank robber or murderer or something, uh, it's, it's evidence there's no parent. <laughs> That's not evident of that at all. And we live in a free will paradigm, which means we were trusted enough to come here to planet Earth to explore to learn about Mother Earth, to learn about the elementals, to learn about nature and how to, could humans live in harmony on Mother Earth? You know, a symbiotic relationship, harmonious. Could we, uh, was it possible? Did, you know, could we do this differently, especially at this time? Because we know that the old patriarchal dominant, um, take, 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 competitive, uh, you know, rape the planet, take what you need, greed-led ideology that ne did not respect the feminine. It didn't respect women, although women and men both have divine feminine and masculine in them. The women represented that feminine. And so keeping women down was part of this whole paradigm of the patriarchy. Uh, when you know, it, it's not apparent to me what they actually thought they were going to gain other than enslaving all of humanity by enslaving the feminine. That is what it looks like to me. But that's for another show. But right now, I, I just want to say, we do have free will. And it isn't because there is or isn't a God. We have free will to make peace. And when we are always just putting the blame on someone or some energy instead of seeing where our power in this is. We're, we're, we're not meant to be victims on planet Earth unless we choose to play those roles, which is another part of that whole thing of, you know, different kinds of um, roles we take on to experience, to, you know, to have that understanding, that awareness, and usually, you know, meant to learn from it. I have played the victim in my life and um, I didn't know I was playing it. I just thought, you know, things happened and they did and I learned from them. And so um, I'm certainly not saying anyone's asking for it. In the human understanding, you know, we, we tend to take spiritual teachings and then try to put them into our the rule book that we've made for humans in the mind of the human, trying to make God in our image. And it's not that way. It's we're made in the image and likeness of God. So really kind of screwy the way we, we twist things around. But so when the accident happened and my son left the planet, I had a very mystical experience, which I'm not going to go into the whole thing here. I definitely did do that in my ebook and I've talked about it before, but what I'm wanting to say about this whole thing is just the, the synchronicities, the messages from the other side that have come to me since he uh, went to soar the universe, you know, um, one of the things that stands out for me is, is early on, maybe the first couple of years, I was in a kind of a state of shock and euphoria. It was this really interesting place to be. But he would do things like um, send me the scent of his cologne, which was very distinct. It was like, you know, I couldn't miss it. And uh, just to let me know he was around. He would... Um, he'd tell me jokes. I'd be driving in the car and I'd hear him telling me jokes because, um, he, he'd just lighten it up, you know? And, uh, and that was fun. 
Sometimes he would play with electronics. I walked into the bedroom one time and my CD player started playing a song that I felt um, that I used to play a lot to, it just felt good. It was called, um, there is a place and, um, and Cindy and, um, can't remember the other woman's name, but uh, wild rose, I think I'll put the link on here and, uh, just to make sure people know, because this is going to be on audio and on video. So, and for those of you just listening on audio, I am going to show you a few of my paintings. So if you want to see those, please, um, go to the YouTube channel because, um, it's kind of cool. But, um, so that's one thing using electronics, very, um, simple gestures that I, I know, um, um, he's around. And, uh, so a really significant one was this year because it's the 10th anniversary from when he left the planet. And I thought, um, I've been painting a lot of different colors lately, trying to, I've been creating paintings, thinking in terms of, will this look good on fabric? Uh, some of them are that are on my fabric fashions at Le Galeries now uh, came from paintings that I'd painted quite a while ago. But some of the newer ones, I've been, you know, dabbling in different colors so that I can create something for a lot of different people. And, but I've noticed this year in particular, I've been using a lot of mauve, a lot of purple, a lot of deep blues and colors like that. And so, um, my sister said to me, why don't you check and see what the color of the year is? And I said, oh, okay. So I went and did that. And the color of the year is called, uh, by Pantone's color of the year, it's called Very Perry, which is a kind of combination of uh, mauve and, or grape and blue. And it's really, it's, it's a periwinkle blue color. So go back to, um, about 11 years before that, um, ago, uh, my youngest son was getting married and my son, Ryan, who's now soaring the universe, the cosmos, he was, um, oh, that's really funny. His friends used to call him a name that just popped into my head. Um, that was something like that cosmos. Um, that's just funny. And anyway, that, that, that's how it comes to me. It's like, well, but anyway, he, he bought me the dress I wore to my younger son's wedding. And it wasn't a dress that I would have ever picked for myself. I just, it wasn't the color. It wasn't the style. There was nothing about it that would have hanging on the hanger. And, but he arranged with my sister to go with me. So I had no idea you know, what the price was or, you know, anything like that. It wasn't, he, it was his gift to me. And, um, my sons are both very, very generous and have been very loving and, and with me always. And it's beautiful. So anyway, I went and my sister, we were in this boutique and she pulled this dress off the rack and said, try this on this. And I, I couldn't see it. I just couldn't see that at all. So, um, I did, I put it on. I came out of the, uh, just, you know, kind of put it on, came out of the dressing room and there were other people in the store and I looked and all these people had their mouths dropped like, whoa. And I thought, okay, this is weird. Then I looked in the mirror and I was like, wow, you know, and I didn't even have my hair done or makeup or, you know, shoes, anything. And it already looked fantastic. So anyway, that's the dress I got. And the color was periwinkle blue. So, and I loved it and it did look great. And so I just never really thought about it. Um, I, I just loved the dress, but then when, um, the accident happened and I was looking for a dress to wear to the funeral, I, um, I think it was my sister again, who said you should wear, or it was either my sister or my daughter-in-law said, you should wear the dress you wore to the wedding. And I thought, oh, that seems weird, you know? 
but it wasn't weird at all. He bought it for me and he would want me to look good even at his funeral. And so I did, I just dressed it up a little differently. I wore it with a little, uh, it was sleeveless. So I wore, uh, yeah, it was sleeveless. So I wore it with a black, um, thin shirt underneath it and black leotards and, uh, it looked, it looked great. And, um, and I wasn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to look like the dragon, um, dragon down, um, I mean, in grief, I mean, grief is grief, but it doesn't, you know, it, it can also be um, a kind of ecstasy in a way, because it, you know, it really helped me to, to, to let him go with tears of joy, tears of sorrow and tears of joy at the same time, tears of sorrow for me not having him on the planet anymore, his brother not having a brother anymore, you know, all of those things um, for the rest of the family, knowing that, you know, because he was a source of great laughter and great fun and great love and great generosity. And, and so I knew he was going to be missed by his friends, by everyone. But at the same time, I knew he was done. He was so done with this planet and <clears throat> he had other things to do. And one of those things is helping me from the other side, helping me recruiting um, angels and people and connecting people for me. And he has connected me to a lot of people to have on my shows, to um, one of the first connections that happened was it happened in a dream. I was um, woke up in the morning and I was, I always remember my dreams. They're very vivid. I do lucid dreaming and the works. And one of the things he did was sent me um, a message to say, call, um, contact Sarah Fowler. He gave me the whole name. She's a friend of mine. Have her on your show. And I woke up in the morning and I was like, who is Sarah Fowler? And why would I have her on my show? Like, what are you talking about? And I didn't know her. And so I had to go look and through his friends list on Facebook and whatever and find this woman's name. And it turned out, perfect guest. She had been a medic in the Canadian military. She was in Afghanistan. So she had this whole experience that was remarkable and interesting. She was a great guest. And actually, you can watch that show. It's still on my YouTube channel. So that was one. And he connected me with other people as well through um, you know, different spiritual people, psychics and um, angel people and, and has brought me connections and ideas to work with my, my fashions and to uh, do my podcast and in writing my book. He definitely helped me write my book and I knew that he was going to do that. Um, because he felt it was unique and uh, my experience, my insights on my experience. Um, the experiences themselves are not all that unique, to be honest with you. I think everybody's had some sort of trauma that can be um, debilitating and uh, suck the life out of you. And so that part isn't all that unique. It's just I tell that those parts to help to share the insight I got from it. So there's that. So when I found out this was the year of the uh, very Perry Pantone's color, which is so much the color of my dress, um, I knew that was the significance of this 10 year anniversary. And I've been using a colors very similar to that for the last few weeks in my paintings. And so I wanted to show you this one. I am, uh, I call it memories. And this is just um, one of them. Oops, I don't know if you can see it very well. This is fresh off the paint pot. Uh, I painted it last night and um, it has the very peri color in it along with a lot of gold. And um, so I'm not sure if that's showing as I, I actually did. Um, I did uh, about six paintings last night with this um, 
one color and then a few more. And then I went back and realized I had a whole bunch of other ones that have these similar colors in a different um, composition and uh, different sizes and so forth. And I mean, all of my paintings are inspired and I just kind of go with the flow. This one I was kind of trying to find. You can put it any way you want. You can hang it any way you want. Um, so, yeah, it's just so much fun. And so, yeah, whether there's a God or there's not a God, it doesn't change the fact that my son got into a vehicle and left, um, and left the planet that way. He could have done it any, any way. I mean, that's the thing. We don't know the mind of God. We don't know um, the will, the contract, the understanding of the person when they came into this planet. We don't know that. We only know, okay, they're here now, they're at the party now, and let's enjoy them. Because we don't know uh, when their agreement was to leave and how. And sometimes, you know, I think that we, we prevent people from leaving when they actually are planning to when they're done and um they're miserable because they wanted to go and uh you know for all the good and there is a lot of good in modern medicine and in um, our awareness but when it's your time to go really and truly i just don't think anything's going to hold you back and you know i'm grateful that um, he did leave because he was done, because I felt that. And rather than linger, um, you know, in how many ways it, it could have gone. And so, and I know that sometimes the people who survive can have that survivor guilt. And when I really look at that now, I, I think there's nothing to feel guilty about. You weren't done, they were. And so you, you're here to live, live your best life and take whatever lessons you may have learned through the process. I'm not saying it had to happen for you to have those lessons. It did happen. I think that's how I have come to look at life. Not that we deserve bad things to happen. Not that um, there's some kind of punishment involved here. It's very simple. Life happens and it's how we respond to it that makes a difference. It's, it's, um, we can't stop life. We can't stop the weather. We can't stop other people from their free will. But we do have control over ours. And so when we're talking about what's going on on planet Earth right now, and we say we want peace, but then we get on social media and we're calling politicians names or we're calling other people names or we're um, being mean in our daily lives, those are kind of little wars. So... It, well, they're conflicts, conflicts. <laughs> and so we can't have, we're not going to have peace until we make peace with ourselves, until we stop fighting ourselves, until we stop judging other people. And, you know, when I, um, when I have told people over the years, you know, that my son had transitioned that way, um, there are people who think, that um, it's the worst thing that could ever happen to you. And I disagree. Um, I think it might be the worst thing they can imagine happening to them. For me, the worst thing would have been for uh, my, my child to suffer for years with a cancer or, or you know, some other um, illness. That would be worse. So it is a matter of point of view. But when people are telling you how you feel they're projecting their stuff onto you and so just be aware of that if you're going through something like this how you feel about it is very personal and how much time it takes for you is also very personal i have days where i i you know i feel really sad i really am missing him in the physical i don't have many of those to be honest but i know a lot of people do and um, because I always feel him with me, you know, I'm sure he's with me right now. And so I don't feel 
that I've lost anything. I'm so aware of Einstein's um, saying that nothing can be destroyed. Energy, once it's energy, it's always transforming. That's all. It's, it's never destroyed. So um, I know that in my heart of hearts and I have no, um, no fear of, of death and no sense that I've lost anything in this whole process. But you know, when people are telling people who've been through traumatic experiences to just get over it, I really feel that comes from a place of every time they look at you, you remind them of something, either their own trauma or something they fear. And so telling you to get over it is, even though you can't, it's not going to ever happen, but it is their way of trying to put up a wall to protect themselves. It is a way of them, you know, trying to control you and your behavior. So sometimes, you know, a person has had a big um, loss, like a child dies, a spouse dies, and they are moving into other areas of their life after that happens. And you'll hear people have all kinds of judgments about they got married too soon after the, you know, this person just died two years ago, um, or three months ago, whatever it is. I mean, how much time do you have on the planet? You know, whether it's two years, three months, whatever, if you are ready to move to a new relationship, then you do. Um, you know, they, um, shouldn't be happy. What do they have to be happy about? Look at their lives. Well, I'm happy. I choose to be happy. I choose to be happy in every now moment. And when I feel really sad, I choose to enjoy that sorrow and let it cleanse me and let myself feel because I spent a lot of years outside of my body. Um, uh, I went into this in a lot of detail in my ebook, the, the, what happens when trauma is not handled well and permission to breathe was how I felt my whole life was that I was never enough, that I could never do enough. I just, I was taking up space and, you know, I just did, I was waiting for someone to say, yes, you're enough and you have a right to be here. I didn't know that was my God given right. If I was here. Um, I had the right to eat and to be. And so I really wanted to just share with you the reality that we are all having different experiences on planet earth. We are having them in when we experience grief, when we experience trauma, when we experience joy, and we need to get in our bodies so we can feel them. This is an emotional planet as Norma Cowie is always talking about on her shows, She's been a guest on this show as well, and hopefully will be again. But this is an emotional planet. We're meant to feel. It's what we do with what we feel. It's what we do with what we think. It's what we do and, and the way we respond to life as opposed to reacting to it. And it's the same with fear. You know, fear is our part of our navigation system, but it's not meant to be uh, milked for other people's agenda and did a whole show on that. Don't let your fear um, be something that other people can tap into as a source of energy to fuel their agenda. Don't do that. It's yours. It's for you to navigate life. It's to tell you there's danger over there. But if you're living on fear as your uh, main source of energy, that's a lot of adrenaline and you're going to burn out because I know it happened to me and I, uh, I don't give medical advice. I'm not trying to suggest that in any way. Um, if you need medical advice, please contact your healthcare practitioner, of course. I am saying my experience and my insights and, um, you know, this is a significant date on my calendar. It always will be March 15th, um, the Ides of March. And um, I was never so surprised uh, when this happened and, and I was never so surprised at the way I was able to navigate this, uh, territory. But as I have said repeatedly, I was prepared. 
I was prepared by life for this death. And it is, yes, some people say, oh, you can't possibly be. Well, I think life is always preparing us for every event. Everything that happened to us prior to today prepared us. I couldn't do this podcast right now if I didn't have these experiences. So those things prepared me to do this. It's crazy, but it's true. And I really think that um, opening ourselves to possibilities and under new understandings, perhaps, we're shifting on this planet. We're moving into the fifth dimension with Mother Earth. She's already there. And so no wonder we're having all this conflict as, as you know, this shift is happening. There's, there are people who want to stay in the 3D, the duality, the fight, the uh, competitiveness, the survival of the fittest attitude. Whereas the fifth dimension is much more about equality, love, harmonious, enjoying this beautiful planet and each other and all of our gifts and talents. And I think as more and more people are waking up to that, that that's why we came. We did have a manual. We just forgot. And so the manual we picked up is the one that humans have been using, uh, came from the patriarchy telling us, you know, you're a woman, this is what you don't have <laughs> the rights to. You're a man, this is what you must do. Um, and on and on and on, right? So it's just an interesting time to be alive. And I'm super uh, amazed that, um, you know, my sister connected with asking me to look up what was Pantone's color of the year. And then it turns out it's the very color of the dress that Ryan had bought me. And it has been, I've been painting this color for the last few weeks. And there always seems to be energy before the anniversary date and then after. And so, um, yeah, this is not on the website for sale yet, but um, it probably will be. It's, um, and like I said, I have, I painted six last night, all in different um, techniques and, but, mm, primarily the same colors. It's kind of interesting and how different things can look. So I will, um, if you're listening on the podcast, you really have to go to the YouTube channel to see the paintings. I'm going to add the other paintings to the end of this video. So, um, or throughout, if I have a blooper, I'll have to put one in. <laughs> so, um, the podcast is up and I'm, I'm starting to populate the guest list. And so if you are someone, I'm really looking to find someone to talk about the influence of color, um, vibration on, uh, the human condition. And because I know, uh, I feel it. And, um, I think there are people who've researched this more than I that could maybe share that. So I, I'm, that is a guest I'm looking for. If you happen to be one of those people, then, um, do contact me through my website, CWC artandsoul.com. There's a contact uh, link there. You can get my ebook, of course, and you can, I will be putting up a pre-order link soon for the paperback and of permission to breathe. And also the uh, fashions are coming fast and furious. And so um, if just go to my website and you will see the link to the um, fashions, wearable fashions. And, uh, wow, I've got quite a few now that are new patterns, new designs, and in different styles from dresses, fancy dresses, casual dresses, um, tops, t-shirts, jackets, um, you know, like, um, what are they think casual jackets and then shawls and scarves and pants and, and, um, all that kind of stuff, skirts, a few. And then I've got some that are tapestries that you can hang on the wall or you can throw over a chair or a, a sofa or something like that. So not a lot of those because um, you can buy the painting. And uh, so it just depends on whether you're looking for an original acrylic painting on canvas or wood, or if you're looking at for something that's a little more transportable and, and so forth. So there's all kinds of options and uh, I'm super excited. So yeah, guest list podcast um, can be listened to on my website or Apple podcasts or on YouTube. And so thank you so much for joining me and listening to my raw mama's heart 
today um, as I acknowledge and honor my son for his amazing life. Short life, 29 years old. He was a month short of 30. And um, somehow I just know he was absolutely done and had a lot more exciting things to do up there uh, traveling the cosmos. I just want to say that if you're in grief, if you are going through some kind of um, just part of your life that is really hard right now, um, know this too shall pass because it always does. And I've been through multiple um, life <laughs> experiences of trauma and none of them ever lasted. But it does help if you've got some tools and so I really think that reaching out and connecting with people who know how to help with trauma, with, you know, um, there are so many resources available now to people. We don't have to stay in this pain. There's no glory in suffering. Um, pain is needed to tell us, to warn us, to say, hey, you're not on the right path here. Pain is a really good indicator, but suffering to me, happens when we don't acknowledge the pain. Once you acknowledge that pain and let yourself feel it and maybe make the changes you need to, you know, you've got your hand on a hot stove. Pain is telling you to move it. If you don't move it, you are going to suffer. So that is my little tidbit for you. We're all going through stuff. And when someone's in joy and don't, don't criticize them for it, you know? You don't know. Um, I say take the joy when it comes and hold on to it. Put it in your heart because when you have a day like I had on March 15th, 2012, you're going to need that reservoir to be full. And I had mine full and it helped me to navigate the whole idea of having my son leave the planet when I didn't expect it. It's the only way off the planet. I don't know why I didn't expect it, but I didn't expect it then. So for you, I send you many blessings, much love and ease and grace on this really hard journey. You know, give yourself a pat on the back for making it this far because it isn't easy being human on this planet. And um, free will is, is, you know, responsibility and rights, not either or. So let's really um, go out there and make this an amazing day and week and month and year. And um, I wish you well. Until next time, take care. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for subscribing or following, liking and sharing the podcast. It helps me grow this channel and hopefully reaches more people with an empowering message. It's always nice to know there is wisdom out there and you can tap into it. Visit the website for more information on how to be a guest, see the guest list and future shows and topics. And while you're there, I invite you to browse my acrylic art pieces on canvas and wood. They make an amazing home decor, high vibe art. And you'll also find the link to my storefront for luxurious women's fashions and home decor created and designed by me with my art and manufactured in Montreal, Canada by Le Galeriste. And it is really amazing to have found them. They are environmentally conscious they use a special dye that is doesn't fade and it's humanely manufactured. It is an awesome time to be on the planet with and have these choices. So I invite you to explore and see if there is something there for you. Until next time, take care.